Then historically Riemann uh, said, I, I do not like this idea, he did not say that, but essentially he said why we should assume that the function should be bounded. So, his idea was very nice one, he said uh, intuitively seems, uh, so this is A and this is B, he said this is the graph of the function f of x. And what you want to do, you want to capture the area below the graph of the function. So, this is the area that you want to capture, right? Okay. So, to capture this area, what you are doing is you are trying to take uh, upper sums and lower sums and trying to capture them in between. But let me do this way let me take any point in this, take this height and take a small nearby point c plus delta x. So, that will give me this. So, look at the area of this strip. Okay. And try to imagine the whole area being made up of these thin strips. So, what is the area of this strip? You can take f of c into delta x and try to sum it up. And the idea of summation is same that you take partitions and make partition finer and finer. But his idea is instead of taking the minimum and the maximum in that sub interval, take any value in that sub interval and take any uh, rectangle of that height. So, let me define that and uh, so definition f is a function on a b to r. So, let P be a partition x 1 less than x n equal to b, take any partition right? and choose any point C i belonging to x i minus 1 to x i. Take any point in that closed interval x i minus 1 to x i look at the height f of c i into the length. So, that is at the strip, right? take the summation that gives you an approximate size of the area below the graph of the function. So, so let us call it a s. P f. Now, there are two things one should observe. To define this sum, we do not have to assume f is bounded. We do not have to assume because we are looking at the value of the function at some point. So, we are taking the height of the function at that point into. So, right hand side is meaningful. This, so, this sum is well defined, right? We do not have to assume. At the same time, note that the point C i is a arbitrarily chosen point in the interval x i minus 1 to x i. You can take the left end point, you can take the right end point, you can take the midpoint, or you can take any point, does not matter. So, look at this and look at the limit norm of p going to 0, make the partition finer and finer s p f. So, if exists we say f is, now we will call it as Riemann integrable. If this limit, so what is the meaning of this limit exists? Concept of a limit again, but norm of p going to 0, what is the meaning of this saying that limit exists? So, so let me explain that because that is for every epsilon bigger uh, sorry uh, limit exists. So, first of all what is the limit one should say that 
there exists some number a belonging to r such that for every epsilon bigger than 0 there is a delta such that whenever the norm of the partition is less than delta that implies this sum s p f minus a is less than epsilon. For every choice when p is a partition s p f depends upon the choice right. So, this says for every choice of those points c i whatever choice you choose if you construct s p f that should be close to the number a that is what the limit means. Okay? So, you say it is integrable and uh, this number a is called the integral we should say a Riemann integral for the time being because we have a notion of in integral coming from uh, upper sums and lower sums called the Riemann integral. Of f. So now, uh, once we give a another way of interpreting the area, we should say that this way of defining the area is same as the one we had done by upper and lower sums. Both are same. There is no difference between them, right? So let us prove that. But before even proving that important thing comes namely that if f is Riemann integrable right, and if we want to prove that it is this integral is same as the one which we obtained from upper and lower, but that was defined only for bounded functions. So, there should be a theorem saying that if f is Riemann integrable implies f is a bounded function. right? So, let us prove that first that if f is so, theorem first f a b to r f Riemann integrable implies f is bounded. All right. In total, it seems quite okay because if the function is unbounded, those strips areas you can keep on increasing, right? So that is one way of looking. But let us look at another way of proving this. So f Riemann integrable implies there is a number a such that for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta such that for every p, norm p less than delta implies s p f minus a less than epsilon. The boundedness means what? We should be able to show that for every point x mod of f of x is less than or equal to some constant. That is what we want to show. Okay. So let us uh, so let us say this p is a partition. So something say a is equal to x zero, x one less than x equal to b. Right, then for every point S i and T i, see the S p f requires choice of a point in between the interval x i minus 1 to x i, right. So, let me choose some points x i T i uh, between x i minus 1 and x i, then for every such choice we have. So, let me write corresponding S p f f of S i x i minus to minus x i minus 1 
sigma i equal to 1 to n minus a less than epsilon, right? That is a sum corresponding to the choice of S i, but let me also choose the sum corresponding to some other choice f of T i x i minus 2 x i minus 1 minus a less than epsilon. For two different choices, let us, so that is what it says. But we only want at a point, so let me make a choice. So let us choose S i equal to T. Uh, okay. No, no. Let me just uh, let us uh, try to take uh, from these two equations. Let us subtract them and see what we get. Sigma of f of S i minus f of T i. equal to 1 to n. If I subtract, I want to look at this. So, that means if I, uh, what will I get less than? Oh, sorry, uh, into that length of that interval. So, let me minus f of T i into x i minus x i minus 1. I want to estimate this quantity. Right. So, I can add and subtract a. See, this is summation, this the first term minus mod a, this minus mod a. So, summation f of S i minus capital A times this plus minus of that. So, I am saying this is less than 2 epsilon. Is that okay? Because what is the first term? Summation f of S i times this length. So, I can add minus capital A. So, I will get 1 epsilon by using triangle inequality and that other one, I will combine it with the other one. So, triangle inequality. So, add and subtract capital A in this thing and use triangle inequality and use this 1 and 2. Is that okay? Or shall I write that step? So, let me probably in case it, you feel uncomfortable, let me write. So, the reason is because this quantity, right? is this summation f of s i into x i minus x i minus 1 minus a plus the other term uh, sorry uh, minus summation f of t i that thing minus a. Add and subtract right and now use triangle inequality. So, this will be less than or equal to absolute value of this plus absolute value of that and use 1 and 2 to get the required thing. So, this is less than 2 epsilon. So, let me call this as 3. So, in this 3, let us put take S i equal to T i for every i bigger than or equal to 2. Then what will happen? That terms will be 0. Right, those terms will be zero. So what is left is the first term f of s1 minus. So that will give me implies f of s1 minus f of t1 absolute value into the length x uh, x1 minus x0 is less than x1 minus that is positive anyway less than two epsilon. Is that okay? In equation 3, I am putting S2 equal to T2, S3 equal to T3 and so on. All remaining terms will be 0 except the first one. So, first one will be F of S1 minus F of T1 into the length 
So, that is x 1 minus x 0. Okay. So, that is the case. So, what is mod f of s 1 is less than or equal to what is mod of f? So, mod of f t 1 into x 1 minus x 0 plus 2 epsilon. Is that okay? From here, this implies this. Is that okay? Mod of a minus b less than something. So, what is mod a less than? Okay. Triangle inequality again. You can add and subtract if you like. And now, now look at this quantity. F of t1 is the value at some point t1. Okay. Length of the interval. So, this is less than or equal to some number, right? f of t1, the value of the function at a point t1 of your choice. You can take it f of t1 to be a left end point a1, a. So, it f of a into the length. So, you can put maximum b minus a, right? This is the length of the sub interval. You can bind it by the total interval plus 2 epsilon. Is that okay? f of t1, t1 is a arbitrary point in the interval x i minus 1 to x i. So, let me take the arbitrary point as the left end point a. So, t1 is equal to a, x1 minus x0 that is the length of the sub interval. So, that is less than the length of the full interval that is b minus a 2 epsilon. So, call this as a some constant m. So, what is s1? s1 is a arbitrary point in the first part. So, what we have shown is the function is bounded in the interval x 0 to x 1, right. S is arbitrary. So, since S is arbitrary, S 1 is arbitrary in the first part so that is a to x 1, f is bounded in x 0 that is a to x 1. So, what we have shown is we have found a partition. Now, so how did I get the first one by choosing s i equal to t i. I can do it with other ones now. s i equal to t i everywhere for all i except 2. So, I will get boundedness in the second interval and so on. right? So, similarly other sub intervals. So, let me write. So, similarly f bounded in each one of x i minus 1 to x i for every i and that proves it. Yeah, okay. you can divide by that also. Uh, okay. So, to be very precise, uh, it should have been multiplied by this. So, 1 over of b minus a, put that also if you like. Take it on the other side, there is a constant multiplying, that is what your question is. This multiplied by x 1 minus x 0, if I divide, so it will be 1 over of this quantity, right. So, 1 over of, okay. No, I should not say write 1 b minus a, I should write as something else. Yeah, I think uh, f of s 1 minus that makes it smaller. Yeah, there is minor thing, I think from here if you want to go, then you should uh, yes, there is a small h I should because this will not give you directly this, you have to divide by that right x 1 minus x 0. So, uh, this is not correct, we should have x 1 minus x 0 multiplied by this is less than or equal to this quantity. Okay. 
so uh, we'll have one over of x one minus x zero. Can I uh, bind that with something? Yeah, I think 